Hello, and welcome to the natural logarithmic function differentiation. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and assistant professor at Doniana Community College. Uh, this is for a calculus, Math 1411 at UTEP. Chapter 5, Logarithmic, Exponential, and Other Transcendental Functions. Comes to us from Larson's 11th edition, Calculus Text. Section 5.1, The Natural Logarithmic Function Differentiation. So, if you need a review of logarithms from pre-calculus, uh, pre go to my videos labeled 1508, and uh, I think it's chapter 3, so it'll be section 3.3, 3.4, 3 3.5. You can check out the YouTube videos, or you can follow the notes that I have posted on my website at UTEP. The only things I'm going to discuss in this particular lecture are the calculus aspects of logarithms. So, the natural logarithmic function is defined by the natural log of x equals the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt, assuming my x value is positive. All right. The domain of the natural log function is the set of all positive real numbers. Notice uh, the x here. The x is the upper limit. The x being greater than 0. All positive real numbers are my domain. The letter e denotes the positive real number such that the natural log of e is equal to the integral from 1 to e of 1 over t dt, which is equal to 1. So the natural log of e is 1, and this is how we define it. This is a new definition. This is not something you've seen before, but that's because this is your first semester of calculus, and we can finally define the natural log function how it's supposed to be defined. So let's let u be a differentiable function of x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And if we look at that definition and the second fundamental theorem of calculus, it totally makes sense that the derivative of the integral from 1 to x of 1 over t dt should be 1 over x. And we can generalize that. The derivative with respect to u of the natural log of u is 1 over u times du dx. And I will frequently say derivative of the inside divided by the inside. This is, of course, for u values that are positive. So let's find the derivative. If f of x is the natural log of 3x, we can take the inside and let 3x minus 1 equal our u. Our derivative is 3. Put these together. The derivative of the natural log of 3x minus 1 is the derivative of 3x minus 1 divided by 3x minus 1. If h of x is the natural log of 2x squared plus 1, we'll let u be the inside, 2x squared plus 1. The derivative of u, therefore, is 4x. And the derivative of the natural log of 2x squared plus 1 is 4x, derivative of the inside, divided by 2x squared plus 1, the inside. That's it. Derivative of the inside divided by the inside, the derivative of the natural log function. So let's make it harder. If y equals x squared times the natural log of x, we'll use the product rule. First is x squared, second, natural log of x. So y prime is first times the derivative of the second, so x squared times 1 over x, plus the second, that's the natural log of x, times the derivative of the first, and the derivative of x squared is 2x. x squared times 1 over x simplifies to x. Frequently, I'll put the 2x in front of, or I'll put everything in front of the natural log of x so it doesn't somehow creep inside the natural log function. You can also factor the x out and call this y prime equals x times 1 plus 2 natural log of x. I get in the habit of factoring things out because a lot of times we set it equal to zero looking for critical numbers and it's just a good technique using the zero factor property. Is it necessary? Absolutely not. We want to find the derivative. This is the derivative. Great job. I just wanted to show you an option. What about if y equals the natural log of the natural log of x? Well, u is still going to be the inside, natural log of x. Then the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So the derivative of our y is the derivative of the inside, 1 over x, divided by the inside, natural log of x. Uh, we can rewrite this as 1 over x times 1 over natural log of x. Remember, dividing by the natural log of x is the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. And we would simplify that as 1 over x natural log of x. 
if f of x is the natural log of 2x over x plus 3, uh, I probably actually wouldn't do it this way, but we're going to because it's already on the slide. Let u be the inside, and I can find the derivative of the inside. Then, f prime of x, right, the derivative of the natural log of 2x over x plus 3 is the derivative of our quotient divided by that inside quotient we started with. Instead of dividing by a fraction, we'll multiply by the reciprocal, and then we can simplify. And that's a fine answer. That's a great answer. But look how easy it can be if we use log properties. Uh, the, the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. That's a 3. Now our derivative make sure I use the correct letter here, f prime of x. The derivative, derivative of the natural log of 2x is 2 over 2x minus the derivative of x plus 3 is 1 over x plus 3. And when I simplify, this is 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 3. And as it turns out, this representation is the partial fraction decomposition for our first answer. So I could use the quotient rule with the log rule and simplify. Or I could simplify with logs and take easier derivatives along the way. Notice I don't have to use a quotient rule anymore if I involve logarithms. This is going to lead us to an amazing uh, technique here at the end of this section in part two of the video. So either way you go about it, these are the same answers. However, if f of x is the natural log of x plus the square root of four plus x squared, there's nothing I could do. The natural log of a sum cannot be simplified. So I'll let u be my inside value. I'll find the derivative of u using the quotient rule. Nah. Quotient rule doesn't seem very appropriate here. How about we use the chain rule? And the chain rule gives me the derivative uh, as x over the square root of 4 plus x squared for our radical portion. Then the derivative of our original f is a derivative of the inside divided by the inside. And I chose to multiply both the numerator and denominator by this square root. And here the square root of 4 plus x squared. And it distributes first to the 1, and I get this. When I multiply it by my fraction, my rational expression, that's how I get my x. Distributing, I'm multiplying the square root times x. And the square root times the square root gives me this a full value of 4 plus x squared. Do you have to? I'm tempted to say yes. I'm pretty sure WebAssign will take this as an answer if you're using WebAssign. Uh, but it's nice to simplify it so that we no longer have a complex rational expression. For the natural log of the absolute value of the cosecant of x, I'm going to take my inside to be the absolute value of the cosecant of x. The derivative of the cosecant of x is negative cosecant of x cotangent of x. And so my derivative of the natural log of the absolute value of the cosecant of x, derivative of the inside over the inside, which gives us the negative cotangent of x. Okay, so we can find some derivatives using natural logs. What can we do with that? We can always find an equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at the given point. So f of x is 3x squared minus the natural log of x, and the point 1, 3 is on the graph. I want to know the equation of the tangent line. For an x value of 1, the equation of the tangent line given to us by the point-slope form of an equation is y minus f of 1 equals f prime of 1 times x minus 1. We already know that f of 1 is 3, that was given to us in the point, so we need to find our slope. But remember, the slope is the value of the derivative, so I'll take the derivative of 3x squared, which is 6x, and subtract the derivative of the natural log of x, which is 1 over x, evaluate at 1, that's 6 minus 1, which is 5. Now my equation of the tangent line is y minus 3 equals 5 times x minus 1 distribute on the right, add 3, 
and I have the equation of my tangent line. Same as we did before, only now we have a new, new little tool for finding derivatives. If our function f of x is x cubed times the natural log of x, and I want to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph at the point 1 comma 0, I already have my x, I have my y, so let's find my slope. f prime of x is, using the product rule, x cubed times 1 over x, so first times the derivative of the second, plus natural log of x times 3x squared, so that's second derivative of the first. Simplify, x cubed times 1 over x is x squared. I'm going to move my 3x squared in front as a coefficient on the natural log of x. And evaluate when x equals 1. 1 squared is 1. 3 times 1 squared is 3. The natural log of 1 is 0. So this is 1 plus 3 times 0, which is 1. I love it when my slope is 1. Uh, y minus 0 equals 1 times x minus 1. That just becomes y equals x minus 1. Remember, you can always graph the original function and the equation of the tangent line, and they should touch in the single value uh, of the point given. Check your work. It's not that hard if you have access to a graphing calculator, or you can access desmos.com or their app, fantastic app. They're making a uh, improvements, adding things on all the time. You could request, make requests on Twitter and they could see what they could do about it. A great company so far. I don't even know who the company is, but I love their product, Desmos. We can also do implicit differentiation using a natural log function. So if I have the natural log of xy plus 5x equals zero, and I don't want to take the time to algebraically solve for y, I can use implicit differentiation to find dy dx. The natural log of xy, notice there's a product on the inside. So the derivative of the natural log is one over the inside times the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of xy is x dy dx, first derivative of the second, plus second y, derivative of the first, one. The derivative of five x is five, and the derivative of 30 is zero. Don't forget those old things that we knew. Distribute 1 over xy times x dy dx and 1 over xy times y. Still add 5 and 0. Notice we have this nice cancellation here. The x's will cancel. The y's will cancel. Don't forget to leave a 1 in our numerator in each place. So we have 1 over y dy dx. Subtract 5 to the other side. And subtract a 1 over x to the other side. When we multiply both sides by y to solve for dy dx, to isolate it, we have negative 5y minus y over x. Last example of implicit differentiation. If we have 4xy plus the natural log of x squared y equals 7, we will use a product rule here. So I'm going to take 4x as my first part and y is my second. That's 4x times dy dx plus y times 4. First derivative of the second plus second derivative of the first. I'll add to that the derivative of my natural log. So it's 1 over the inside, 1 over x squared y, times the derivative of the inside. And again, the inside is a product. So we'll have x squared dy dx plus y times 2x using the product rule. Don't forget the right hand side. The derivative of 7 is 0. 4x dy dx is good. 4y is fantastic. Simplifying by distributing 1 over x squared y. Uh, in this first term, the x squareds cancel out. I have 1 over y dy dx. When I distribute 1 over x squared y times 2xy, the y cancels out. One of the x's cancel out, and I'll have 2 over x. Still have a 0. Everything that does not have a dy dx is subtracted to the other side. We'll factor out the dy dx, so we'll end up with negative 4y minus 2 over x divided by 4x plus 1 over y. And instead of having both of my terms in the numerator negative, I also factored out a negative sign. And then I got common I can multiply both numerator and denominator by xy. 
And when I do so, it clears up my compound fractions, my compound complex rational expression, and a nice little simplified version here. Is that acceptable? Eh, probably sometimes. Is this better? Absolutely. That's part one of the natural log function differentiation. Part two is a specific technique called logarithmic differentiation. One of the best tools you're going to find for finding derivatives. Thanks for listening.